Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kell, and we are listening to episode 105 for July the 12th, 2021, and I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another outstanding episode. And if our listeners go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you see our recommended video links, and we've got some videos of uh, from uh, our two favorite shenanigans, Rafi and Klee, some of their opinions on some things, and then a video from our from Mikey of Jerry Rama. And then a really interesting video of the evolution of art and how it shaped our modern world. And we'll see if we get around to talking about any of that. Right now, I'm going to send the mic over to Diane and let her lead the conversation. (laughs) Well, the first video we had was about um, if art serves a purpose. And I think um, he, he did mention how boring the world would be if art did not exist. I can't imagine not having any music, not having any paintings, not having any designs on our clothes, not having, you know, all kinds of, um, all the arts basically make our life so much more interesting. And that was like, um, I guess that's what a lot of people don't realize. They don't think about that. Like, you know, they kind of put artists down sometimes and think, oh, you're just an artist. You know, you don't make, don't really make any money. You know, no value really. And I think that's kind of part of that, that they don't realize how much enrichment we artists bring to their life. What do you guys think? Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I think most of all, if when you're an artist, it's not something you can help. And you're just driven to be an artist. Um, and a lot of times... It does help people in its historical value a lot of times also. But a lot of times, to me, being an artist is, like I said, not something you can help. You just have this compulsion to paint or to do whatever kind of art you need to do. A lot of people also, uh, it's good for, it's good for, um, what is the right word, for, health benefits or uh, mental benefits 
they do it for relaxation and a way to get things out on paper or whatever whatever their form of art is to get it out and like i've said before a lot of times to me is to let people know what i'm thinking um because it is a way of letting people know what's going on in your mind uh, a lot of times you don't know how to express yourself unless you express it that way people some musicians express their music that way artists express that's your your thoughts out into the world by having it expressed musically or writing or painting whether it you know whatever the medium is um so yeah i think it serves a big purpose whether it's just for your own enjoyment or somebody else's enjoyment to make a political statement or a just purely for your own enjoyment i mean whatever that enjoyment is it's definitely important and uh that last video of the you know the evolution of art that takes mm -hmm. you, to, you know the, the cavemen you know the, they you know the, in, in the video is really really good the guy starts out with you know the the cave paintings and he uh, scientists and archaeologists you know have have been for years have been studying you know the, the cave paintings and uh they noticed that they actually started seeing a, a progressive change in style. Uh, they started off, they were mostly, the earlier ones were mostly stick in and then a little, little, little bit of animals, but then they started to get more elaborate. And that said, maybe at that time, that gene that's in humans, humans we cannot not create. We have to create. And that proves it. From the earliest times, you know, they... Uh, mm -hmm or decorate they started out it looked like it was a, a recording they were recording their hunt their, their daily lives and then they started getting a little more elaborate and it got to be more decorative you know and and he what was interesting this gentleman in a video made the connection to the the cave drawings possibly a, there was a, a connection with the hieroglyphics with the egyptian you know and and throughout the ages the you know art you know developed we as humans we cannot help ourselves of course and in line with this is the poetry and the writing and the philosophy and and, and, and which is you know a part of the arts you know and then the music and it's just like it's throughout the ages each gener generations and uh, as human beings you know of course they didn't bring up the one thing which i realized right away is that we as human beings we also have a a divine spark it's a divine spark in us so we have to create in order you know and to express that that divine will and um it, well you know of course our modern times try to you know they do their best to try to get rid of that but it's there it's obvious throughout the ages yeah and 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 you can see so yes and answer clee clee and raffi's question yes art does have a purpose <laughs> Man. And, and it has and it has a purpose not only for the artist but also the people that are observing it mm -hmm. i mean it's like it, it works both ways i mean i've seen people in museums and stuff looking at paintings and crying you know it's mm -hmm. like you, you never know how something's gonna you know move somebody and um that's it's and not a uh, tangible thing that ha you, know, you don't know that's going to happen you know it's absolutely yeah i've done a painting i did a painting one time for a lady she had twins and one of the twins didn't make it and so she had me do a painting of the twin that didn't make it it was all swaddled you know so i did it and she hung it in her living room and now she gets to enjoy it all the time you know i mean when you have a loss like that and then you get to have a reminder there that you had that loss it's it's nice you know i mean i know it's painful but then it's like a validation of the child that you lost you know uh, so um i you know there's always that you know so you know, i've done i've done you know pet portraits and i it's been a while since I've had one so far i haven't got one for this year but i managed to get 
two or three, at least the last, the last couple of years, you know, and, uh, one pet portrait that I did was of a colleague, their dog, it's, it, for some reason, they're all the pets are all pets that have passed away. That's why yeah. I, I used I've, to, done, I've done the ones that were still alive, but they're probably all passed away by now, <laughs> but yeah, I've yeah. done those too. I don't have business cards printed up, you know, deceased pet painter, you know. Or no, you don't want to say that. Just do pet portraits. <laughs> uh, this lady, I, uh, it was of their, their family dog that had passed away. And when he was a pup, they, she gave me a photo that she wanted, you know, so I did it. And when I delivered it to her, she literally embarrassed herself because she started crying right there in the break room. Everybody was like, Whoa. well, you did a good job then, you know. So <laughs> going on, you know, her eyes were getting red, you know, everything. She yeah. Yeah couldn't help her it just means you did a good job and it almost got me crying because I, said, wow, <laughs> I didn't think i was that good you know i could create a piece of artwork that would bring somebody to tears yeah well, they get to look at it all the time now and remember the pet they were so fond of you know that's the that's the plus thing you know so yeah yeah art does have a different purpose you know and on, on that sense and uh diana what's the next one um uh, what what inspires you? <laughs> What's your inspiration? What do when you somebody mean? asks you what inspires you, what do you say? Yeah, that's what it was more because we've talked about what inspires you before. You know, yeah, we have. We have crossed this subject before. This this subject, what caught my attention was uh, when you know if you are at a show or uh, you know, you're, uh, you've done shows, haven't you, um, Diane? Yeah. Somebody comes up and they ask you about your art, and, and so almost always somebody says, "Well, what inspired you to create? How do you?" Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do. <laughs> but I, when I first started doing it, I would get that that glazed look in my eyes, and uh, <laughs> along with that deer in the headlight look, <laughs> and then I started getting used to it, and then I would just tell them what the idea behind the painting would be. You know, I learned to to have a to have a you know a thing about that with painting in mind when they asked me that, and especially with the jewelry. You know, I would have something, usually a certain stone or something. I would have when I bought the stone, I had something in mind for it before I when I bought it. You know, I would see the stone online, and then I had a, an idea in mind when I bought it. So I would go ahead and make that out of it when I bought it. But paintings were different. You know usually a, when you're doing a painting especially if it's plein air it's all about the place you know that inspires you you know so in still lives you it's all about how you set it up you you finally work the whole thing out until you're happy with the setup like last week we we're talking about you know uh, invisible artwork so uh so diane how are you going <laughs> to when you stand in there saying you have an invisible piece of artwork, what, how are you going to say that? Is, what inspired you to create that? <laughs> well, I mean, I take my in inspiration mostly from my environment and the th places I've been and um, the um, feelings I have for different locations. Most of my art is, is uh, landscapes. So that's, really what I talk about mostly. Um, but I mean, I've done animals and stuff too. And most of those are, are my own animals or animals that I know. So, you know, I could just speak to that, but <clears throat> most, I mean, since I do realism, mostly it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. I don't get that question a lot, I guess, because they can see what it is, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think you probably get them more question more with abstracts or yeah. they can't relate to, like they, they're trying to figure it out. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, you got to have a good story for, uh, you know, like we talked about that guy for invisible art, you know, we, I, you yeah. know, when I had my, when I displayed my first invisible. And he always had a good story for that. That guy did. <laughs> when, but yeah, the abstracts now, when you, you show abstracts, you do have to have a good story for that. Who went, mm. My first piece of invisible art, you know, that somebody asked me, I was like, well, you know, uh, this, this, uh, contains. Are you really going to have to be, you're going to have to be brave enough to do an invisible piece now, Clyde? This piece contains the cosmic rays of the universe colliding with 
the uh, parallel dimensions of our messed up world. <laughs> How's that sound? Well, you can always say what you can. I have a, I have an idea for an invisible one. Okay. <laughs> Black <laughs> hole. <laughs> Black hole. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a white circle and then it's going to be black and that's going to be a black hole <laughs> okay now i already um, got my idea in my head getting into the silliness diane what's that what's our <laughs> mikey talking about <laughs> oh he was talking about having projects and how many you Too have many. and, and <laughs> um i normally don't have a lot of projects going on at one time i i pretty much have one main one i guess and I'll work on it to a point and then I have to wait for it to dry or something and I might start something else, but I don't have too many going at one time. Most of the time, I don't have a, sp I don't have the space to have them set up to do that. So <laughs> I guess that keeps me from being, <laughs> being, you know, starting a bunch of paintings and never getting any of them finished. Yeah. Yeah. I used to do that, try to have too many going. And then a lot of times what would be happen it would be that I would not end up finishing any of them. So I decided that I would only have one painting going at a time, no matter what I was working on, it would just be the one I might work on getting panels or something else done, you know, to get ready to, things to paint on in the, while I was working on something, but I would only work on one thing at a time because I know what happens when you start working on two or three items at once. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm I not always sure, like it, up. trying to meet deadlines or something. I think it, it has a tendency to make you lose interest in the first one. Like if you mm -hmm. start other ones, yep. it, it's hard. Or to you'll keep lose that. Focus. You'll lose that that momentum or something. Mm -hmm. You just it just gets lost in the your um. I he gets lost on it or something. I don't know what happens, but anyway, I can identify with what Mikey was saying because it's not that I have too many projects. I have too many ideals, too many ideas. Wow. I, I, That's always the case. <laughs> yeah, up, but you have to learn a channel. I come up with, I'm going to do this one. Okay. And I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. And then yeah, I do this because I know what happens if I try to start too many. I end up, Mikey says, you end up not doing nothing. He talks about, you don't complete the project. In my case, I just don't start sometimes. <laughs> no, I used to try and do too I. A long time ago, I worked on several at a time, and what happens is they end up over in the corner because I lost my train of thought on it and my enthusiasm. <laughs> and I just, I, you know, I just throw it on the side and then I don't finish it. Yep. Well, it's that good. That's in my in my case. I, uh, you know, sometimes I just don't get started, and I really sometimes sometimes I just I have to force myself. Okay, just do this. Don't worry about doing that other thing. Just do this. It is. Yeah. It is hard to focus sometimes. Like you, you have all these ideas and you, you don't know which one to go after. And you, you know, you start one and then you think, Oh shoot, I should have started the other one instead. And, you know, you do go through that. Um, well, you can make you notes of what you want to do. Yeah. But it, you know, it's not, it's like an, in the moment you want to do a certain thing and then you know, that moment's gone, like the next day, you know, it might not be something that you really. Well, that's what sketchbooks are for, to write yeah. and draw, draw something out about that idea and make notes and sketches for it. So that when you get done with what you're working on, see, that gives you the momentum to finish what you're working on so that you <laughs> get on to the next one. That is what I have discovered is the push for to get to the next painting that you want to do. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. Well, I you finish that one, move on. <laughs> Make some sketches and some notes in a sketchbook. And then that way, that's what you can... I have several sketches that I, you know, are future for future projects. But right. uh, well, that's like I switched to the last, the last uh, about the last two or three weeks. You know, I've I've been working in watercolors, and the reason why because in constant, it's your fault. It's your fault because I started to do work on that painting and oil of those of your two donkeys and it started going downhill fast uh -oh. I, said, I said 
So I, I stopped, I got the underpainting of it, and he, you know, and I just laid it off to the side. And then I started to do another you know, oil painting. And it started going downhill. I said, okay, this is it. So I quit. Yeah, so I switched to watercolors just to give myself a bit of a break. Now I'm getting ready to, I'm going to go back to oils, you know, but it was. Well, finish the first one first. Don't allow yourself to get one, move from that. Well, I'm going to go. Get sketchbook handy. So when you get bunked or whatever it is, it's making you angry don't keep being angry about it just continue to sketch in the book with your ideas and little watercolors yep. making notes and stuff for your future paintings and then go back and work on because i know what it's like to get frustrated with a painting you just need to take a break and do something else yep. and then go back and because sometimes you just have to take a breath because if you keep beating your head against the wall it's not going to go anywhere <laughs> sometimes you might just need to throw that thing in the corner and start over yeah it's been sometimes you can't once it's messed up too bad you you just have to throw it in the corner and give it up and paint the other side with just so and start over again <laughs> who knows i'm not ready to do that yet but hey i'm yeah I, I know sometimes you just have one that just isn't working out and you just need to start fresh yep that happens i've done it i think we'll... many times i throw them in the in the fire pit out there and burn them <laughs> i'm not that that desperate but um anyhow um let's uh i think we're about ready to wrap this up i already mentioned uh diane you want to talk a little bit about that uh, evolution of art video what do you what do you think about that what's your thoughts on that um yeah i, I can see how well I've, I've had art history a lot so uh, the, the evolution of how art came about is really interesting and how um things developed and a lot of along the way, you know, the government and a lot of social stuff played into what kind of art was important and um, like all the church, you know, the churches coming up, they wanted a certain things depicted so people could, because a lot of people couldn't read. So back, you know, years ago, so they wanted the artists to depict a lot of the stuff that was in the Bible or whatever. And so people would understand the different stories and things a little bit better. So, you know, there was a lot of things that played into how art developed, you know, I mean, past the caveman days, they, you know, like, well, they, they were depicting things that were happening in their life and um, trying to record it in some way. And I guess that's sort of a lot of what has happened in art, but then there's all these other people that have played into what, you know, was important for the artists to do, and they funded the artists for different things and so those kind of art or that that segment of art came about more because they had the support of you know people paying for things to get done and stuff mm -hmm. so you know that fed into a lot of how the art developed that was interesting yep and that video remind me have you guys ever watched the uh, mel brooks movie uh, the history of the world yeah probably but it's it. been a long time <laughs> yeah there's this there there's a, a scene in there where he talks about he says uh, the first comedian and it shows back in caveman days and it shows this guy trying he, he's uh, uh, grunting and whatever and the other people are just kind of staring at him and then all of a sudden the dinosaur comes out uh, eats the guy up and they all start cracking up laughing <laughs> why was he grunting he, he was grunting because he was trying to be a com the first comedian, you know, and they weren't paying attention to him. And, you know, they were, they were frowning at him. Oh, like instead of the hook on the end of the cane to pull him off stage, the dinosaur just ate him? Yeah, dinosaur just grabbed and ate him, and then they all started laughing. He <laughs> 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 was the first comedian. <laughs> when That's a rough crowd, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about eye, a rough right? crowd. <laughs> Oh gosh! That little that that little short clip of uh, this evolution of art. It, I, for some reason, that clip in Mel Brooks movie came to my my mind. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Things just kind of happen. We don't, you know, <laughs> and we don't necessarily plan them. But hey, you know, because uh, his uh, his movie you know, History of the World they had some realistic things. But of course, it's comedy, you know, whatever, you know, especially when he Louis the Fifth louis the 13th or whatever you know it's good to be the king <laughs> and then 
scene of the uh, space. Yeah, it depends on who who comes after you, whether they take you out with a guillotine or not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, those yeah. people were pretty ruthless back in those days. The Spanish Inquisition, you know, and <laughs> the way they did that. I mean, it was so funny, you know. <laughs> no, no, will you convert? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Love that movie, favorite movies. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, let's before we get carried away, let's wrap this up, folks. You have been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode one hundred and five for July the twelfth. With and I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, and I am Clyde J. Kale. And thank you so much for listening. I hope you uh, enjoy these podcasts. Please uh, give us a thumbs up. Let us know. Uh, send us some comments. We appreciate the comments. And of course, if you would, if you are a working artist and you uh, would like to contribute, the link is always there: www.talkartpodcast.com. Talkartpodcast.com. The Zoom link is there. We meet every Monday, and you're more than invited. Uh, if you don't want to participate in the uh, podcast. We'll just mute you and we'll do the recording. We usually t end up talking for an hour, sometimes two hours. <laughs> you know, uh, we only record about 30 minutes or so, but the rest of our conversation is just talking about art and what we're working on and cows and chickens and farm problems and whatever else. And those two trying to get me to go out and get stung by bees and bit by snakes. And <laughs> we have a variety of conversations. I'm going to say bye to uh, Diane and Constance. <laughs> Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everybody. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, Charles. Come back again. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, too, for joining me. And until next time, bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kim. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. -N -N Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.